Well, let's take a look at what the Bible says about how to study the Bible. Isaiah 28 and verse 9. It says, Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? All right, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. In other words, you've got to have some kind of maturity level before you actually understand doctrine. You can't just have an emotional religion where you go to church, raise your hands up, sing in the choir, and, and shout out amen and stuff like that. No, you've got to have some kind of maturity level about you before you can understand doctrine. You've got to study your Bible. Continuing on in verse 10, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, uh, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Now this is a how we are to study. You don't take one scripture to prove anything. It's got to be precept upon precept, line upon line, here, there, and yonder. You put it together to create a tapestry, a bigger picture of what the Word of God says. That's how you study the Bible. So let's notice it again. Precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Now let's consider another verse that people often use here to where they pick and choose. Matthew 22 and verse 36, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is likened to it, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, this is how I've heard this verse explained by religious people. You see, they'll say, You see, there's only two verses that Jesus ever mentioned in the New Testament, and that is, these two verses, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Only two commandments. And for most religious people, it's up to them to figure out how to do that. It's up for me to figure out how do I love my neighbor and how do I love God. That's the illusion. Now, you know, here, here's the thing. Unbelievers want a simple faith. Why would the carnal mind do this? Well, it's very simple, you know, it's, it's because we want to have the answer. We don't want God defining stuff for us. We want to define the stuff for ourselves. Now, here's the, the, the crazy thing about all this is that what Jesus is actually doing here, what people overlook is this. Jesus is just summarizing the Ten Commandments here. Uh, he, he's not saying, well, just love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor, and you figure out how to do that on your own. No, he's just summarizing the, the, the Ten Commandments. The first four tell us how to love God. Never have any other gods. Never make any graven images. Uh, never use God's name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day. Six days shall you labor, but the seventh is a Sabbath day. Okay, the first four tells us how to love God. The last six... Honor your father and mother, never murder, never commit adultery, never steal, never lie, never covet something that is not yours. Your neighbor's wife or your neighbor's land or property or home, don't covet the last six. So Jesus is just summarizing the Ten Commandments here. But again, why do we pick and choose the most simplistic verses found in the Bible? Because unbelievers want a simple faith. You know, there's a reason Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? 